Um, yes, yeah, so a little bit about us in the background. Um, Connection was founded in 2006. We are from a background of actually a transport services business. We have full telematic systems. Um, we complete, compete against the likes of Navman in that sort of area and, um, and other competitors in, like TomTom. Tom. We do have full turn-by-turn -turn navigation systems um, linking back into now our field mobility solutions as well. What we've found in the market is that it's really important for us to actually connect all the IoT systems together and that's why we have founded the, um, the Connection One system. So in the, currently we have over 10,000 connected units and around about 5,500 connected users um, in the market uh, utilising our systems on a daily basis. Uh, right now is a really good example. Um, most all the most well, the majority of our customers are still in business right now. They're still running, um, obviously with essential services, and um, so we're supporting them as best as we can in the background to make sure that all their OHS safety and all their operation systems are up and running 100%. We focus on businesses to process the automation of your system. Um, that is that everything's linked and, and talks back to to our main integration core, if you like, which then connects things together, connects multiple databases together, and also connects the uh, ERP system, which is MYB Advanced in this case. Um, we like to offer our partners, that's you, um, new ways to actually enter the market, that which, which allows us to show you that you not only are we about the accounting system, but we're about a lot of other things around the edges, which we'll go into. So Connection um, exists to basically strip away all the paper-based systems, delivering a modern industry-focused mobile-first solution for our intelligent hardware and intelligent IoT systems. What we like to do is we found over the time it's best to actually try and deliver something that's semi-ready um, out of the box, just like MYB Advanced. We like to then scope the scope the, um, the utilization and the requirements with our clients, and then tailor a system to our, to our customers. What we've found over the years is that really, you know, there's no what one shoe doesn't fit all. Um, so it's really important to actually have a system that can be tailored and deliver on what that customer requires. Um, for example, in the last 10 implementations of scheduling of staff and scheduling of, of equipment, there's been 10 unique schedulers being created. Not one scheduler can do the one thing. Um, every business works differently. Every business has internal systems and also a different equipment and different people. So what that means is that, for example, some, some of our class customers have more subcontractors than staff or staff and subcontractors. Of course, you're going to be scheduling things differently and also licensing needs to be looked at in a different light as well. Do you have anything to add there? No. no okay. Um, one mantra that I love to say, and I think being in this ISV world and implementing systems is that don't let perfect get in the way of better. And what we mean by that is that it's just better to have a better system and get it up and running than what you currently got. Um, the, I think one thing that we struggle with, all of us, is that everybody strives for perfection, which is achievable, but it does take time. But so the way that um, we work with our clients is that we try, we, we get them to a certain point and we make the systems 100% operational so everybody's happy in what they have and it's and it's working. And then we work on the perfection of that system. But once we get all, we identify all the low hanging fruit and where everything needs to be required to be delivered, that's where the perfection can come in. But well, that's where we strive to be better but not perfect. Thank you. So, with our connected systems, we're looking at uh, line managers, you know, the directors, the employees, even the subcontractors. They're all different layers in the business, as we can see here in the, in the layer pyramid. The director will definitely want to know about any um, incidents that are happening on site, but also he'll want to know the profitability of a job potentially as well. Whether as a line manager is responsible for the profitability of the jobs. 
and also the systems. And in some cases, um, responsible for a lot of the OHMS as well. So what we like to do is we actually um, divide our system by roles and that then transpires into um, obviously operational uh, levels and security levels as well. So we can have an employee that, for example, has a incident on site, that incident would then be transferred to the line manager, but the director would be automatically alerted of that incident. Um, if that employee was not to fill in his pre-start checklist, for example, for his excavator, or he might not fill out his pre-start checklist for his truck, um, his line manager would then be notified and can see in the tables and in the, in the dashboards that that employee hasn't filled in that pre-start. Now, using IoT, we can go even further that the employee can't start the vehicle until they've completed the, the pre-start checklist, but most customers don't want to go that far at this stage. So what we're all about is a transfer of information, even all the way from a subcontractor saying that they're going to be delayed on a job due to unforeseen circumstances that needs to be um, transpired and communicated to a high level within the organisation. And then we also have the employee maybe putting in a leave request form, for example. Um, what we like to do is try to keep everything in one system so they're not having to go in different applications to actually like do a leave request. They can do all that through our system and they can be approved and then automatically uploaded into the accounting system. Um, the other examples would be any, a new miss or it, even a better example would be an NCR. It's not un, in an ISO, ISO 9001 environment, it's not different or it's unlikely for a employee to raise a, an NCR or, a, or an issue on a project. Now that needs to be gone through um, stages and a gated workflow. Um, the system allows you to do that all the way to the director or executive in the high level, which then can actually sign off on the NCRs and, they can, and then have all those information at their fingertips while they have their executive meetings. We're just going to play a little video here um, of one of our customers, Rangedale. Obviously, they're in right now. They're running. They keep it running. It was what they say, and they're in the uh, drainage businesses right now, keeping all the sewer systems and everything running as we as we go into it. So moving forward from here, um, these are a lot of the modules that I didn't have time to go into last time that we um, had a meeting. So I just want to do this in a quite a high level, but the system is capable of basically creating any module that you want. Now you guys might have some ideas of module that you need that we can actually help you create as well. Um, there's a module on here that we have, for example, safety management, which one of our larger customers actually we help create and that's safe at work. So um, just, just focusing on that at the moment so you can understand what, we, what we're talking about is that one of the larger customers, Kona Elevators, um, had, had a two-up program with their staff. That was that every, every elevator and travel elevator that they had, they had to have two people going to that as their buddy, their safety buddy, essentially. They came to us with a big problem. They wanted to know about all their asset management. They wanted to know about all their safety and they wanted to get rid of two up buddies as well because that was obviously costing the, the, cost, the, the company double. What we managed to do is come up with a safety management system, what we called Safe at Work, which is an auto alert system basically for a loan worker. So they've got their rostering system built in, built in, um, in connection, which allows us to actually roster on and off the staff 
as per their um, requirements and also schedule them, schedules the employee to the job and they check in in the morning and when they check in in the morning, that thing gets their latest GPS location. Once they're in roster, they are GPS tracked through the day for safety. Um, obviously that was very hard to get through the ETU, the Electronic Trade Union, but um, once it comes to safety, everybody's happy. So that was just one example of a, of a scheduling system and, and customization that we actually can do. Once the employee actually has an incident on site, we actually have it set up that the phone's in a stagnant situation. So the phone is not moved for a certain amount of time and they're in roster, um, it does send back an alert to management at Kone and their safety management people. That also automatically sends an alert out to the five closest people to that person in the GPS location of that incident um, and ask them to check on their buddy. Obviously, um, at that point in time, they're actually calling the phone and the phone is beeping. It's quite funny because also this stops um, and curves taking breaks in roster that aren't authorised because they actually um, can't have the stagnant device on the table. So, for example, if they're in, in roster and they're meant to be working um, and they leave, the, leave their phone on the table, it will go into a stagnant point. So the guys are having to always move their phones while they're in roster. Um, so that's just one example of a custom application which we can do. But some of the other ones high level that we can do also is your project management systems. Uh, project management systems is basically what I like to explain as the, uh, the filing cabinet, the filing cabinet drawer. That's where all the information is kept. And then inside there, you've got your folders and then you've got your vanilla folders inside there in the old paper sense. Um, the project management's all encompassing in the one system. It, 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 it connects projects back into MYB as required as well in synchronization through our integration. And all your costings, purchase orders, the whole lot of it is, is contained in the project management. Um, you can also do progress payments in there as well. We're very excited about obviously this, the construction edition and also the um, manufacturing edition. We're pushing to be one of the first to actually have that. So we're actually, our systems can be integrated before the release within six months. So we're really pushing forward for that one as well. Um, the next module here is your job management. Your job management is another layer of a container with inside the project management. So you can have jobs that are linked to projects and that can be then ticked off. And then so all the information from those jobs is then propagated across back to the project. Um, and that's also linked later on into task management. So you can actually have task management in job, job management linking back to project management, which is a great linkage for all of them. Across all three of those is time and attendance. Obviously you're attending a job, you don't want guys having to do double time sheets and things like that. So if you're doing a job, yes, time and attendance is incorporated into the job. Um, but if you do want your employees and you don't, uh, to be on a separate timesheet system, that's fine, we can layer that as well. A lot of our clients like to have their, their, their um, employees um, clock in and clock out first start of the day at the end of the day and then they also then got the job, they layer the job information below that as well so they can actually understand what time they actually got the site. Um, the asset management system that we actually built was built for Kone originally. Um, these guys have we've gone above and beyond when it comes to SOPs, for example, on asset management. And then th th that's where we actually originally didn't have equipment management, which is the next module we'll talk about. They were very overlaid to the two. We realised that an asset is more of a bricks and mortar um, and then and obviously a piece of equipment inside there or, or an asset that needs to be serviced. And then, that, then, then there's a different um, aspect when it comes to equipment management, because equipment is then transpired as a truck your car, your laser levels, your chains, all those bits and pieces. The other difference about the equipment management on laid on the asset management is the equipment management may have certification certificates, they may have um, uh, their servicing schedules, they may be serviced on time, it might be serviced on kilometres, it's completely different to an asset. So that's why we created the asset uh, management module. E-forms, I think we're all pretty familiar with forms now on, on mobile devices and on the web. Um, we've got a really easy GUI to use on that. Um, and one of the things that we like to show is that we can actually have customization of output of the data as well. So it's not always um, well kept into one, 
one framework for the data. You can actually manipulate it and change it as required for the output. So if you're a subcontractor, for example, working under a tier one, you can change your paperwork to make sure it looks exactly like the tier one's paperwork. Um, and also you get all the information coming out the back of that. Scheduling, I think I said that earlier before. Scheduling, we do have a default scheduler. We have multiple layers on that now. We've got different ways of scheduling, SMS scheduling, um, through the availability of casual workers is, is a big one that we do. The other one that we do also is we have um, people that are linked to their competencies as well. So their skills and competencies can be overlaid into the schedule. So if they have been inducted to that site or they don't have a heavy vehicles license, they don't even have a forklift license. When you try to schedule them for a job that has all those um, underlying requirements, the, that information is then transferred across and can show you in the scheduler. And we can set it up as you like it. We can set it up so it'll block the job or it'll just highlight to you in a different color that there's a problem with that job or that person. Um, another thing that people like to do is like to schedule by crews. So they like to schedule by multiple people, package those guys up into a crew and then schedule them to an asset. These are all the different types of scheduling. Um, we learning about scheduling still every week, custom comes with it to us with a different requirement and update. And I suppose the greatest thing that on our framework is it's so flexible and we have the know-how, we have the great team here at Connection that we can actually make those changes for you. Um, so we've also got contractor management, that's like the skill and competencies. You've got most important that you guys be interested in as well is your quoting and invoicing. We can link the quoting to the, to the project, to the jobs, and all that information can be then transpired through back into the one system, back into NYV Advanced. Um, invoicing the same, so we can do progress invoicing, we can do one-off invoicing at the back of jobs, we can do uh, workflow invoicing as well, so it might need to go to multiple people for approval. Um, and in saying that, purchase orders as well, we actually have built some really nice workflows with our clients when it comes to purchase order requests. So employees um, ordering a request to purchase orders and the purchase orders are then coming back um, as approved or rejected. And obviously off the back of that, purchase order is created and, this, and then auto synced with them. And what be using our API. Document management, quite important. So that's um, for our construction people out there that, that may be like all your dial before your digs and all that sort of information coming back. Uh, running multiple integrations with your accounting system and, and third party. We do, for example, we do a lot of integrations with um, APA, so that's Australian Pipeline Association. They have, um, they're running a, like, for example, an IBM Maximo system. Those IBM Maximo systems can be pushed into ours. Um, all the jobs are created and then all the invoicing can be pushed out through MY. Um, you've got your tender management in there, that's your bid, no bids, which are really important. You've got your contracts as well that you currently have, how you're servicing them when they're coming up for expiry. If you're running um, any business, you really should be doing audits. They are, you know, for example, risk management ma management audits. Um, for, uh, uh, during this time of the coronavirus, we, obviously we're running risk management on what's the risk of our business staying open, staying closed, you know, what are we doing? It's really important that we actually scale that and, and then communicate that back to the employees. We have a risk management module in our system um, by default. And then we actually then can mit um, mitigate the risk management of what's happening. And that, that's also on job as well. So that's where it comes into people when they talk about SWIMs and JSAs and all that sort of stuff. That's where the risk management really comes into it, um, which is completely left of um, accounting, but that's what we're offering you guys, is this whole new way of actually going into, into organisations. Safety management is becoming huge and it always will be in, in the management of, of um, employees. And that's where we like, for example, with the Safe at Work application, we have now integrated um, camera systems into our, um, into our uh, array that is like in vehicle cameras. So we actually putting in terabyte hard drives, uh, recording all the information, but that's actually connected using the 4G network. And obviously we're gonna to move to 5G, but 3G, 4G at the moment, fully connected camera systems in vehicles. Um, that's providing us all the GPS locations of where the vehicles are. And we're obviously underlaying that with that telematics. So we can tell you temperature of trailers, temperature of, of chemicals, everything, all the IoT coming, feeding back into our system. And then we can actually, if we create some layers inside the MYB, we can actually feed that information back to the asset management as well. Um, but yeah, the camera system for incident management, 
that's that's really strong. Um, that's one side of the business that's growing exponentially at the moment. And that's uh, live cameras. Um, obviously, normal telematic stuff, FBT, CRM. That we're going to do a demonstration of the CRM system today for you quickly, so you can actually see how the integration works. I'm going to give you a little. I'm going to, I'm going to raise the curtain basically and show you the back end of our integration core where the where the, where the um, where it gets processed. And we're going to show you how a, how a company in a, in our Kim connection system can come through and be pushed through the NY base. So your CRM is massively important. That's where we can link all the all the all the quotes and everything else. HR competencies of staff, um, also you know reviews of of, of what how they're going um, as an employee. Uh, you can, we can also hold all their personal records, you know, all their contact information. Um, little things that we um, the, the holes with MYB don't deliver that we're trying to fill here, basically. Um, and obviously, maintenance management off the back of assets. Um, if you've got transport companies that you're trying to help with, also do full speed management, um, and then obviously fatigue management. We're going to be the first person, uh, and we're actually submitted to NHVR right now to be potentially the first person to have accredited NHVR fatigue management application. In the, uh, which is going to be a game changer for our business and, and for all our customers as well, because that's going to eliminate 100% paper in the transport company. Um, we also got maps now. Everybody's familiar with Google Maps, but we also use like Here Maps as well. Here Maps is really powerful because it can give you all the heavy vehicle routes as well. So all our construction companies that use us and um, and transport companies, they all utilize the Here Maps. So actually, you can do automatic HV routing potentially based on jobs and allocation. So what we're all about is connecting from MYB to MYB Advanced. Yes, we do other account right and everything else, but that's our focus at the moment. We haven't integrated into Green Trees yet, but we do integrate to EXO. Um, but at the moment, most of the time, we are pushing our clients actually up the tree to MYB Advanced because so it's such a good program, but also it um, makes our life a lot easier for the APIs. Um, what we're all about making is MYV Sync, so it becomes the go-to program. Um, so in that, we can do all your contracts, the estimations can be flowing back, we've got the quotes and invoicing can be all integrated using the API, projects, timesheets, materials and inventory that are used, um, equipment, time and people, and obviously the most important one of the most important things is paid off for everybody. Do you want to add? Yeah, I was just going to say with uh, Range Sale, that's a really interesting example. We showed a short video and we're about to get into a, a case study, but something that I thought made a massive impact there is for, the, for their timesheets. Um, it used to be used, uh, they used to use a paper system for that. Uh, which would basically clog up the the morning office, the tea room at you know four o'clock, five o'clock when everyone's arriving to work. Whereas now, if you just saw in that demonstration before, now all they do is they just they've got a little key ring, they just tap on on a tablet. Yeah, which we call a kiosk. Yep, yeah, yeah, and then just signs them in, give them their job, and they're on their way. Whereas and, yeah. yeah, there's multiple ways we actually have those kiosks as well. Like Luke's talking about for people to clock in. Some people like to use. A key tag like this all was used. Some people like to use fingerprints. Some people like to use even facial recognition. So yeah. it's all depending on what how you want to do it. Yeah. Um, so range, that's where we jump into the case study with Rangedale. Um, these guys were in a world of hurt, and we basically really have been working with them hard in the last 12 months to, to get them where they are. We just keep on adding databases. One thing they love about our system is that how scalable it is. Um, they started off in their, in their drainage in their drainage company. They've acquired businesses without the, without the 12. Well, I've been working with them over 24 months, but over the last 12 months, they've acquired businesses in civil construction and also drainage um, and also relining of drains as well. They're separate businesses. They don't want them in the one business. They run differently. They run with different people and they're in different states. So what we can do is we spun up separate databases for them, had child, parent-child relationships within those databases, feeding the information back to the master database for costings, and that's what they want. Um, and these guys are in the transition, they're gonna be updated onto MIB Advanced um, yeah, within the next 
six months. Um, so this is Iram. He is their financial controller there. Uh, I may as well have a little listen to what he has to say about our systems and what we had. I think better coming from a third party. Back in 2017, we've been using Vexo for approximately five or six years. We came to a standstill in the sense that the company was growing, but we couldn't grow with the existing database anymore, especially on the operational side. Um, what my experience probably with Connection is that um, the guys had a an impossible task to do, basically taking you from a uh, from a manual stage and turning into a sit in front of your computer and you'll be able to see all your vehicles and where your guys are, what time they start, what time they finish. Capture that information and put it through reporting to see your production and so on. This uh, data is being captured by the system and it's integrating seamlessly into my of the product, uh, which uh, assists us to share it potentially 20% of the time. I guess this is one of the biggest impact that has taken place for someone like me who needs to go in and find the fine detail from three years ago. Um, instead of going for an archive, I'm able to just touch a few buttons and I'm there. So what we're all about is partnering with you guys because what we want to do is extend value to your existing clients. We can offer new things that you couldn't offer before. Um, especially around the ISO operational and the safety aspect of systems um, and still adding on the, the availability and the add-ons of the accounting software. We want to increase user reach and the stickiness. I mean, the more your customers use of our system and, and your systems and the more stickiness they get, there's going to be. Um, it never ends, we found with most clients, to be honest. Once you start on this journey on new systems and, and, and linking assets to, to utilisation reports and, and having all this come back automatically, it just keeps going and going and going because the, the clients are getting so much out of it. They're growing, they're getting more profitable, they're buying more businesses. It's just, a, it's great. It's really, and it's, it's really proud to actually see customers doing that as well. Um, if you had some leads in the past that you know that you didn't think you'd be able to uh, deliver on, well, potentially now you can actually work with us. We can do that. We're all about the single source of truth. I know that's probably used a little bit too too much these days, but that's we've been like that for for the last decade. It's all been about capturing field data, equipment data, and feeding it back to the one system. Um, we're all about obviously using your tablets and, and working from home and everything else, which I think now after what we've been through and what we're currently going through is it's going to be sort of just the norm. The norm. So digital systems is just going to fast pass anything else. Um, and we're only right at the start right now, guys, as well. We're, we're only what they call is crossing the chasm. It's, it, it's not even... We're not even there in the mainstream yet, This all this cloud digitalization. There's still so many businesses out there which are back in the, running on paper systems. Um, we want to partner with you to help you increase your value and your sales value as well. Um, yeah, so I'll just add to that. Um, we've, in terms of increased sales value, we've got different pricing models to, uh, to MYOB. So, um, Traditionally, with MIOB, you you're going to be getting licences from the, the finance team and the, and the admin team. Whereas uh, the way that we operate, we obviously sell them licences, but we will get a lot more people on the ground using our system. And each of those that are on the ground uh, will be uh, will be paying a licence fee. So when we partner with you guys, um, you'll basically be getting a, a portion of that as well, which I'd be happy to talk to you about. Um, and I'll just touch on in terms of how we identify uh, different leads uh, in terms of reinvigorating cold leads or, or even going out to the market. Um, the first question that our consultants ask, they just want to basically get on, um, get it recorded, what data is being captured in paper? Because the best, one of the best things that we do is 
is take businesses from, as Jonathan said to me when I first got the job here five years ago, um, we turn businesses from, from paper to glass and that really captured my, uh, my imagination. And that's what we do in reality. We basically look at all the different uh, paper that's used for timesheets, project management, safety, et cetera. Um, and we, we can digitize that and we can have a massive impact on the efficiency of businesses because you know they can turn a, a five-step process down to a two-step process. Even if it's five-step process down to a four, if it's a repetitive task, um, over time, that, that can really add up to a lot of value. So just wanted to make that point. Okay, so we're gonna jump into a bit of a demonstration now on the on the system, um, so you can see it sort of firsthand. Yep. So right here. Um, yeah, so in here, what we actually got is we've got the database up and running on here. Um, this is the real live uh, example here, and we've got the tablet set up on the left hand on the right hand side, as you can see. So I'm hoping that's all working. Sometimes some people can't see the tablet, but um, yeah, so what we've got here is real uh, real time collaboration between obviously the one database. So people in the office usually use the, um, just like NYB, they use it on their um, web browser, which is obviously compatible across your Chrome and everything else, uh, Chrome and, and, and now the new Edge, and then on your mobile device that's compatible across your iOS and your Android device. Right here today, we've got um, an Android device. Um, and what, what I want to show you is potentially um, how we can actually link things to like an NFC tag quickly uh, and how that actually works. So, but what, what we're going to do actually, first of all, is we're going to go and create a new contact basically in this database. Mm -hmm. um, we can show you in here in the MYB database if we go into. Okay, we'll look back in because we've been timed out. So it's going to do a quick search. Um, so we can see there's three, there's two companies currently there with, with Acme. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to create just another Acme. Um, the synchronization of this usually takes about five minutes. We've got the IC set, set for, which we'll jump into. So I'll do that demonstration. We'll go and we'll talk about something else. We'll go back in and, and then the, obviously that will come back through through using the integration call. So in here, this is, our, this is our modules. This is our sandbox account. So obviously there's a lot of modules in here which you don't have to worry about. We don't like to keep things complicated for our clients. We can actually even create a shortcut application um, that's on the mobile device and also on the web that only, acts, so only allows the employees to access the modules that they need to think things basic. But obviously this is a sandbox, so we, we're seeing everything today. Um, so for example, if we go into the contacts in here, um, and then we go into companies, for example, in here, and then we click on the um, plus and we go into company. We can then create another um, Acme account. And we'll call it Acme NYB. And then, um, well, we'll just go to, I'm going to put some sort of email in here. Yeah, put the email, yeah. So account at myob.com.au. Um, we can put the address in here, just the address will be fine. And as you can see, it automatically does a reverse lookup on, on that geolocation. And in here, this is where we actually do the synchronization. If I was to put this to another to another group, it wouldn't actually synchronize. But so what we're going to actually going to do is put it to the MYB advanced demo users group with myself as the owner. Um, and then we're going to submit that. So in there, that's where that company is. And to show you that company, if I go back, if I go into this database here, for example, on the mobile device, we do a quick refresh. I'm going to companies, do a search. 
And then you can see the new Acme one that came up there in Myob. And in here, for example, we can actually click the, um, the plus, we can add a note or anything else we wanted to that company as required, call logs and everything else. But if I click the edit in here, we can actually add multiple contacts in there as well. So, so we go new contact in here. Looks like Luke. Um, so yeah, the great thing about this is that in here, for example, with Luke, for example, in here, we can go in here, we can click the plus, we can um, click on a note, for example, or even better, we actually might click in here, we actually go um, call log. So uh, originally here, so just in case like Luke called you or something like that, and you wanted to, wanted to go to the next stage, you can hear and you can actually go. Uh, Luke called me about um, the current project and it's going to be delayed by five to 10 days. And you can see that that's pretty powerful in that we don't actually have to type a lot anymore. Obviously, we can use the, the internal smarts of Google and also um, Siri to actually transpire a lot of that information. So put that put that in, in there like this. Um, it's asking me if I want to actually link that uh, that that note to a deal. And obviously, we're going to link that to the project, the Banksy Avenue test project. So everything's linked to the one activity in here. And if we go to the activity, um, the notes in here now, you can actually go in there and you can actually see that it's all linked. Um, we can also, if you wanted to, just for the sake of the demo in here, we can click the plus. We can also click in the um, attach a file. Um, and we can actually take the photo. Um, and then and there we can actually go into the files as well. And you can do this within any any part of the system as well, but we can go into there, we can actually then annotate directly onto the photos, we can change the colour, there's all the plan grid markups and all that sort of stuff as well. But I think it's just really good for you guys to understand the basics of what it can actually do. And the cool thing about that is that if we jump into the Acme Mile now and do a quick refresh on the web browser here, you can actually see there's the new contact there, which is going to be Luke. Obviously, we all push through the mobile device. We can go into Luke and then we can actually go into the notes and see the notes. Um, and if we go into the note, we can actually even get um, more information. We can actually see it's a link to the project as well. Um, and then inside there, we've actually got the files and we can actually see all the, the original markups and everything like that we've done, which is great. Um, so now that that's been put in there, we can actually go into the, into the MYB advanced system. Um, if I should just be able to just go in here and do another search. All right, let's log me out, that's fine. Log back in. Receivables, customers. Ah, and there we go. So there we can see what the brand new um, contact coming through, back from connection from Kim system into the MYB advanced. Now, I just, I thought it was really good to show you that because you know I, you can present as much as you want, but a lot of you guys want to see it actually working. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper here quickly, just high level. I'm going to show you what what, what how we actually do this inside here. This is this is the back end. This is what this is our proprietary software basically, like the application that this is where it's all being created. So this is where we do the customer export. End maps in here. So in here, you can actually see that when the schedule was run last and uh, the next run and when it was run last, you know, at, at um, 12.39. In here, we can actually do any custom mapping of any field within inside there as well, which is massively powerful because you can create custom fields in NYB Advanced, we can create the fields in our system and we can map our fields as required for the field mobility side. Um, and in saying that the system works 100% offline, the connection Kim system does. So the fields, so the fields can be mapped, and when the guys come back into mobile um, connection again, it, it actually automatically syncs and sends the information back to mobile. We can so all these strings and all that sort of stuff in here. So you can see we've made a really nice. Um, a GUI basically, and at the moment we control this GUI when we work with you and your customers to actually uh, put this across. But yeah, there's um so then one other thing in here that I think is benefit to actually show you because I want to get into some questions 
possibly. Um, and that's it under here, under the equipment. What we want to do is, uh, we want to go into here and use equipment. Now, these are daily inspection reports, right? So as you can see, you're doing basically what you saw before as forms. But what we can actually do with these daily inspection reports is um, these are because they're forms, we can actually manipulate the data how we want to do it. So I had one customer once come up to me, he said, you know, I really want the output, but I want the output to be exactly like our paper form. And, you know, I get this a lot. I suppose you guys must get this a lot as well. So I said to him, that's no problem. We can we can actually do that. So this is the customers, Jeff Sands, one of our customers, we can actually see all the data that's being collected in here. Um, and it's beneficial to actually have a look at this on the mobile device quickly as well. So if we go into the um, equipment in here, and we go in. So if we go into here, we can see all the information in there on the mobile device, the signatures, so everything we, everything we can see in here. But if I click the download on here on the mobile device and we just do the normal download, you'll see that this will come up in a normal format. But because we can manipulate and change the data however how we like it, we can actually go in here and we can actually go download PDF with our sectional difference. This can be any customized, um, output that you need. There you go. So what you're looking at here is exactly the same data, but portrayed in different ways. And that's really, really powerful. Um, what we can do from here then, uh, we'll be able to send through a copy of the presentation to you all. Um, and then we'll, we'll be very keen to, to go through some of your feedback one by one. Um, and you can also share this with, with everyone else um, to give you a bit of an idea. So in terms of our organisation, um, Jonathan's is one of the senior managers here. He's our, one of our best consultants as well. So really good at um, dealing one-on-one -on -one with the customers. So um, as a first point of call, if you do have uh, any inquiries or any, uh, any opportunities that you want to raise with us, um, the, I'm, I'm your man, I'm the, the channel manager. So um, we can have a discussion, uh, potentially get a uh, partnership agreement in place. And then um, when you identify the opportunity, um, send through as much detail as you can to us. And then, uh, then we'll be able to work together. So we, we want to really work collaboratively on this with you. So um, we'll be taking, we'll be happy to take the lead in terms of the, um, uh, needs analysis around their mo field mobility, but, we're, but we want to collaborate with you and um, and get all of your intel and, and understand from them from in terms of the um, endpoints with MIB Advance, what, what data would need to be captured. I, I think because there's no real questions at all, um, I think we'll, we'll just maybe utilise this in the last sort of nine minutes if you want into more, more system demonstration and show you how powerful the system is. Um, the, the system in here, basically, we can obviously in the, in the asset man side of things and the equipment management, we can we can go into the piece of equipment, we can um, have a look at that GPS location on the map. Um, if that was to have, be connected to a GPS module, that'd be live. If not, if it's not connected to a GPS module, that system can actually be then um, utilised on, the, on the last point touch point of that system, or, or last touch point of that asset. Um, we can help with all the information and the utilisation of the equipment as well. So we can actually see, you know, how, how many kilometres it was driven this month or how many, how many hours it was used, um, depending on, on how we set it up. That information can be, can be pushed back into the accountancy systems as required. Um, you've also got your, all your maintenance in, information here as well. So that's all the maintenance, uh, maintenance of all the documentation kept in the one place. You've got your cost analysis in here as well, which we potentially would probably use MYB for, but um, this system can be completely standalone. Um, and then you've also got your history maintenance, uh, history allocation on the equipment as well, where the, hit, where the, uh, where the equipment uh, has been. So which, which project has it been allocated to and where is it? 
Um, one of the latest things that we've made is all the maintenance, actually a maintenance scheduling uh, module here. Um, so that allows us to actually um, schedule. That gives us a full closed application. That means like, for example, so if someone was to do maintenance on a, um, or for example, someone was to do a pre-start checklist on a piece of a, an excavator um, and they identified that it had a hydraulic a rip and tear in the hose um, and it's not a critical fault but it can be a critical fault that will be then raised in our system in here um, then the maintenance manager would actually then schedule that maintenance or that that issue um, and then and then the close out of that as well um, and that's that's what we've built here in a separate scheduler and then you can actually have a look at our defects reports in here as well so this is where it really comes into its own that we can actually have our own dashboards, and these are live dashboards. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not 24 hours old or anything like that. Like most uh, BI systems, these are live, so we can actually have any dashboards in our system when it comes to cost matrix, to job utilization, to costing of jobs, to profitability, and then in, in what we're having in here is the maintenance issues. You can see that as a dashboard that's that's truly live, and it's all drillable as well, so we can actually drill down to the total open defects. The def what which defects is in progress at the moment, defects waiting for parts and basically all the defects. Um, that also allows us then to show the other one, which is a service report um, system as well. Oops, just a little bit impatient there. Um, yeah, so the other one is that, um, we believe in train the trainer, which is really important. And well, the way I see it, that once you get familiar with our systems, I have no problems with you guys actually implementing the system as well. And you, don't, you actually don't even have to rely on us to implement um, eventually. So train the trainer is big, and that's a big one for our clients. They like that idea as well, is that once they have the system up and running, they can actually go and create the forms and things like that. So the form matrix in here, for example, if you go into some e-forms information, is in here um, so it gives us like some some straight over dashboards you got your staff who's been filling in the forms and then also your risk matrix as well and in the in here for example we've got all your templates so these are all your templates grouped by groupings custom groupings as required um, and then we can actually go into there so for example you can see that there's 23 um, pre-starts based on different um, different pieces of equipment and where are they actually linked to. So you can see four clicks um, daily inspection. We can go into that pre-start in here and we can actually go in there and see that, for example, a date is a mandatory field. Um, we can actually put in JavaScript formulas in here as well um, to actually then pull the information mm -hmm. across, which can be all taught. Um, and then we can actually link information as well. Like for example, if if the form required the engine hours from yesterday, we can get, go tell it to go into the equipment module and pull that information out. Uh, we believe in, we're a big believer in gated workflow, and gated workflow basically is that you can't get to C until you tick B. Um, the guys can't close jobs down until they complete all the tasks or they complete all the paperwork. But the, all these information here is super easy to actually use. For example, if you want to put a photo, um, Vote field in, you can click on photo in here, it'll automatically put it to position 73 and then you can actually label it. Um, as you can see in here, so you can see that down the bottom now, so that's right down the bottom photo test. And if you wanted to, you can actually preview it on the HTML, you can actually see the, the, the pre-start or any form. You can actually do signature in um, on, on screen as well. And then you can see that there's the new photo test in here, which we can select the file or what you want to do. So I'll just um, finish off with this one, one thought. So with our system, a lot of people refer it to as a framework. So what they're doing is they're basically taking their current business operations and they're putting a, a framework in place. So everyone has to follow through the same uh, gates uh, to complete whatever processes you want. And a big thing around the forms, especially, is um, is around workflows in there. So um, this relates to a lot of businesses that use us, use this platform here to to gain ISO certification. So when there is an issue identified, 
Uh, we're basically you're nominating who will need to be notified, not only who will need to be notified, but who will actually have to close it out. So I think that's just a final thought for me. What we, what we do really well is we help businesses standardise operations, which also has a big effect on uh, being able to, to scale effectively as well. Okay, well, look, um, I think thank, yeah, thanks very much for your time, guys. I think we'll probably leave it there. As I said, I'll be in touch with a copy of this uh, this uh, presentation, um, and then we can go through any questions that you might have had. Um, and then, yeah, look forward to having conversations with each each one of you uh, moving forward. And hopefully, um, everyone's looking to get the systems in order while all this uh, uh, the pandemic's in place. Um, so hopefully we can get something positive out of this, but during this time, I'll, I'll be uh, very keen to have some conversations with you guys. Of course. That's great, but five minutes. All right, so from us, good afternoon, and uh, we'll- yeah. I hope everybody stays safe and well, and um, look forward to again seeing you soon. That's it.